Welcome Cryptopians to Total Crypto Updates, bringing you another video for real deep dives into the crypto industry. Please remember to like share and subscribe to help the progress of the channel and community. TCU is grateful to everyone for watching and supporting our YouTube channel. We only want what's best for you and your finances because everyone deserves an equal chance at residual income and gains from investments. TCU is here to even the playing field. I can't promise to only speak about crypto, but I can promise everything will be overstood. Let's dive into today's very dense crypto update. Let's start off with Apple's new ecosystem and the changes made. Because of the new walled garden ecosystem, Apple is allowed to take up to a 30% cut of revenue from purchases of iOS apps and services. According to Bloomberg, Apple intends to permit the installation of applications on iPhones and iPads from external sources other than the company's own app store. This news was first reported by Bloomberg. The alterations are being made in response to the Digital Markets Act, which was passed by the European Union and mandates that all technology businesses must completely comply with all limitations by the year 2024. In order to ensure compliance with the new regulation, the distribution of support for external apps originating from third-party sources and marketplaces will initially only commence in Europe. According to recent reports, Apple intends to release the functionality alongside the iOS 17 software upgrade. Users of iOS applications for markets like OpenSea and Magic Eden are only able to explore NFTs through the apps, they are unable to purchase or trade NFTs directly through the apps. Coinbase Very just made the announcement that it was forced to halt NFT transfers using its mobile wallet app because Apple indicated that customers will be required to pay 30% of each network gas transaction. In a tweet, Dan Finley, co-founder of the famous cryptocurrency wallet program MetaMask, criticized Apple for its abuse of monopoly. The actual tweet reads, Oh, I'll absolutely stand in solidarity here, I assume MM and every other wallet is next. I'm ready to dump the Apple ecosystem. The 30% tax is an abuse of monopoly. At Tim underscore Cook has donned the Big Brother screen. The link to the rest of the thread will be in the description below. Moving on to an arrest made in the Bahamas, as you all may know just one day before the disgraced former CEO of FTX was scheduled to appear in front of Congress, Sam Bankman-Fried was taken into custody by police in the Bahamas on the request of the U.S. government. According to a statement released on December 12 by Ryan Pinder, who serves as both the Bahamas' Attorney General and Minister of Legal Affairs, Bankman-Fried was taken into custody by the Royal Bahamas Police Force after receiving an official notification from the government of the United States that it had filed criminal charges against him. The statement reads, On December 12, 2022, the Office of the Attorney General of the Bahamas is announcing the arrest by the Royal Bahamas Police Force of Sam Bankman-Fried, SBF, former CEO of FTX. SBF's arrest followed receipt of formal notification from the United States that it has filed criminal charges against SBF and is likely to request his extradition. As a result of the notification received and the material provided therewith, it was deemed appropriate for the Attorney General to seek SBF's arrest and hold him in custody pursuant to our nation's Extradition Act. At such time as a formal request for extradition is made, the Bahamas intends to process it promptly, pursuant to Bahamian law and its treaty obligations with the United States. Responding to SBF's arrest, Prime Minister Davis stated, The Bahamas and the United States have a shared interest in holding accountable all individuals associated with FTX who may have betrayed the public trust and broken the law. While the United States is pursuing criminal charges against SBF individually, the Bahamas will continue its own regulatory and criminal investigations into the collapse of FTX, with the continued cooperation of its law enforcement and regulatory partners in the United States and elsewhere. In the statement, the Prime Minister of the Bahamas, Philip Davis, said that his nation and the United States had a common interest in holding responsible all persons affiliated with FTX. A December 12 tweet from the U.S. Attorney's Office for the Southern District of New York said, USA Damian Williams, earlier this evening, Bahamian authorities arrested Samuel bankman Fright at the request of the U.S. government, based on a sealed indictment filed by the SDNY. We expect to move to unseal the indictment in the morning and we'll have more to say at that time. SBF has also been denied bail, I'm sure the indictment will become bigger as the time goes on. Now on to innovation in crypto, on the Coin Corner blog post reads, 
Users on different countries now have an easier time making transactions combining several fiat currencies thanks to a new cooperation between CoinCorner and Bitnob. The Bitcoin Lightning Network enables users to move payments from the United Kingdom and other European nations to a number of countries in Africa. By utilizing the Lightning Network, the payments are first translated into Bitcoin, BTC, then immediately converted into the recipient's native currency, and finally deposited directly into their bank account or mobile money wallet. The government of Nigeria met with Binance to discuss the possibility of negotiating a special economic zone that would provide assistance for enterprises in the region that are linked to blockchain technology and cryptocurrencies. CoinCorner CEO, Danny Scott, said, The remittance market is a huge opportunity for Bitcoin. The borderless nature of Bitcoin has always made it a great tool for sending money around the world, but now with the Lightning Network, sending Bitcoin is instant and very low cost. By partnering with Bitnob to provide a seamless cross-border experience using Bitcoin and the Lightning Network, we hope to remove some of the friction and cost that customers experience when using traditional FX and money remittance companies. Next we have another stable coin depegging. USDD continued its downward trend, moving further away from its theoretical parity with the USD. Since the beginning of this year, when the stablecoin was originally introduced to the market, this is the second time that it has fallen below dollar parity. The value of the stablecoin fell as low as 96 cents in June before recovering to the level it was supposed to be trading at. On Curve, a decentralized platform based on Ethereum where traders may trade USDD against three other stablecoins inside a liquidity pool, the price of USDD has recently increased. This comes at a time when liquidity for the stablecoin has decreased. To ensure that its value is preserved, the USDD currency can also be minted by the Tron DAO Reserve using Tron currencies and other collateral assets. The Tron DAO Reserve asserts that the USDD stablecoin is collateralized up to a maximum of 200%, which indicates that it claims to hold $2 worth of collateral for each stablecoin in circulation. According to the information provided on its official website, the USDD now has a market value of little more than $725 million and is supported by more than $1.45 billion in collateral reserves. Tron founder Justin Sun tweeted, Deploying more capital, steady lads with a link proving he paid brought 1 million in USDD to help the situation. Moving on to innovation in MakerDAO. The announcement that MakerDAO will be offboarding certain vault types with risk exposure was made public in a tweet sent on the 10th of December. In the event that the new plan is accepted, one of them will be RENBTC vaults. It has been decided to liquidate any RENBTCA holdings that have a collateralization ratio of less than 5,000%. If users don't pay off the rest of their DAI debt, they won't be able to prevent the cryptocurrencies in pending liquidation. The tweet reads, This is an important reminder to all RENBTCA users. The RENBTCA vault type will be offboarded from the maker protocol if the currently active executive vote passes. The thread goes on stating, Conforming to the RENBTCA offboarding process, the following parameter changes will be deployed to the RENBTCA vault type if the aforementioned executive vote passes. Reduce the liquidation penalty, CHOP, to 0%. Reduce the flat kick incentive, TIP, to 0 DAI. Reduce the local liquidation limit, ILK.HOLE, to 350,000 DAI. Increase the liquidation ratio, MAT, to 5,000%. Once the mentioned liquidation parameters are executed, all RENBTCA positions with a collateralization ratio below 5,000% will be liquidated. If as a RENBTCA user you want to avoid liquidation, we strongly recommend that you pay off your DAI debt in full and close all your RENBTCA vaults before the conclusion of the mentioned executive vote. The proposal was very detailed and stated. The Governance Facilitators, Collateral Engineering Services Core Unit, StarkNet Engineering Core Unit, and the Protocol Engineering Core Unit have placed an executive proposal into the voting system. MKR holders should vote for this proposal if they support the following alterations to the Maker Protocol. If you are new to voting in the Maker Protocol, please see the voting guide to learn how voting works, and this wallet setup guide to set up your wallet to vote. 
In the description, the proposal will be in the links portion in case anyone need to look over a few details. That will conclude today's update on trending news in the crypto world. Thank you for watching if you made it all the way through. Stay tuned we are an active admin. Please like, comment, and subscribe, never be afraid to voice your opinion. Tell us in the comments what you think, and give us some suggestions on what kind of content you'd like us to deep dive into. Until next time, good day, good night, and goodbye.